Hello, in this video we're going to look at the MLE and show that it's asymptotic uh, normal. And, and this is true for some very simple assumptions, but there are assumptions. Um, now I'd also point you to a video that I uh, put out a few days ago about the score function and its asymptotic normality. Um, there's some maybe some background in here that's not covered in here that may help and so let the, We're going to let the log likelihood be uh, L of X Which uh, which is which is the log of the likelihood, you know, and this is a uh, You know we, we have to like the likelihood typically is given the sample data you know, we assume that the parameter is random, but if we were to resample, you know, the data, you know, say of size n, we'd get a different number. So we can also think of this as a random variable in x, and then that's how we think of the sampling distribution of the log likelihood. And then instead of saying x, we usually put an n there to show that at, you know n is the sample size and so as the sample size goes to infinity what's the properties and so later in the video uh, we'll change this to an n well actually the next line that I'm looking at so when we take the first derivative of the log likelihood it's called the score and often denoted by a capital U but it's really just the first derivative of the log likelihood now in uh, Looking at the Fisher information, one of the assumptions is that, and sorry that that's pretty small, I added this later because it's important, we must assume that differentiation can pass through the integral sign. Now, there are different ways that you can show this, you know, by the dominated convergence theorem, you know, your functions uh, uh, monotonic, you know, there's different ways to do it, but in the I'm going to call most standard statistical distributions this assumption holds but we it also has to hold you know in this case too so the Fisher information we denote it by capital I of theta you know and the N represents this it's the Fisher information from a sample of size N and really that's just the variance of of our uh, theta let me get my pen out of here so really this should be a function of theta, same way here. And so it's the variance of the score. That's the Fisher information. And since this is a linear combination of variables, you can take the variance goes in and they're independent, so there's no covariance. So it's actually n times the variance of one of those, and that's a number one as opposed to an n. And so this is, would be the Fisher information of a sample size of one, which is this. So uh, the uh, Fisher information of a sample size of n is really n times the Fisher information of a, si a sample of one. This can also be rethought of as, you know, the expected value of the second derivative of the log likelihood, um, which, is, which is this. And in this video, I go into a little more detail about some of these derivations. Now, the observed Fisher information is just um, the negative uh, second derivative of the log likelihood. That's this, and and the expectation, of course, takes you know the average over all possible values, but if we don't average it then that's just it's what we observed okay and and you know we can note that if we take the expected value of the observed Fisher information it it is the Fisher information okay so now let's look at the convergence of the the observed Fisher information so uh, J of theta is the negative uh, second derivative of the log likelihood. The second derivative is is uh, is this. So 
remember that like we look at the product, the likelihood is the product of these and then we take the log. So um, the log of a product is the sum of the logs in, or something like that. Anyway, so we get this and this, and these are IID, the XIR. So this is the sum of independent and identically distributed random variables. So we're gonna bring in the law large number somehow. So the law large number says if we divide this, you know, then that becomes a mean, right? It converges in probability to its expected value, which is this, which is how we define the fish information for a sample size of one, because we're looking at the individual thing. And so the, the uh, ob observed Fisher information converges in probability to the theoretical uh, value. So you can, you can sort of say this, that, that if we multiply uh, the n to both sides, then this becomes n times the Fisher for a sample of one, which we said was, is the Fisher information of sample size n. Now, you know, I may get some grief for notation like this because technically, you know, without the n over here, there's no convergence in probability. And so for here, we say for n really large, you know, for large n, this is approximately this, okay? So there's no asymptotics involved, but we just say for large n. So now, the uh, Taylor series, let's expand this score about the true parameter uh, theta naught, so it's whatever that is. So here's the score, and if we expand it, Taylor, Taylor expansion about the true parameter, then we get, uh, we plug in the true parameter, and then we take the derivative of this, and then plug in the true parameter, and it's theta minus theta naught, and then um, the remainder, so this, this is exact, so we're gonna, then it's the third derivative of theta star, where theta stars between theta and theta naught. And originally I wrote this, and I went, not, nah, it doesn't have to be like that, it could be the other way. So I wish I would have written, you know, that theta stars between these two uh, values, theta and theta naught. Okay, so here's the Taylor expansion. Now a couple notes here, that uh, this here, is minus the observed Fisher information. So we can technically put that right there, and we will. And we also know that the MLE satisfies, you know, when you take the first derivative log likelihood, set it equal to zero, solve for theta, that theta satisfies this equation. So if we put theta hat or the MLE here, then this is this is zero because that's zero. So those are two things that I want to do here. So we put in the MLE, and that's why we get zero. And here we use the observed Fisher information. Okay? And again, theta this so this is hundred percent true and theta is somewhere between these two values. Now we know that the score converges in, in distribution to a normal random variable, so this quantity. And actually in, the, in that video that I pointed to earlier, we derive that, we show that. So in this video, we're gonna assume that it does. Now, um, now we, we want this uh, Taylor expansion to behave properly. So if we divide it by the square root of n, okay, everything, then because this, and if you look at the, what we have here, so this is what we had, and if we just, just divide everything by the square root of n, right, then we know this kind of goes to normal, and then we write this, you know, technically, you know, you multiply that down, that is the square root of n. But we write it like this because then we know this converges in probability to the theoretical value. And ultimately, we want to isolate something that looks like this to prove the distribution of the MLE. 
Okay, so that that's nice, and then we end up with whatever's left. And this is sort of a mess. Okay, but let's rearrange. We're going to um, we're going to take this and this to the other side, and then we're going to factor out one of these and one of those. You know, there's two here, but we just want one and the square root of n. We're going to factor out. Okay, so let's rearrange that into this. And then we, so when everything's brought over, we divide by this, this quantity here. So it gets rid of it on the left side. I mean, it gets rid of it in this term, but it's in this term, and it's in this term. Okay? And then this, we factor this out of here and here, and we get this. Now, this is where it becomes a little tricky. Now, this side, we can... Um, it, you know, by uh, Slutsky's theorem, so this top piece converges in distribution to a normal random variable, and this converges in probability to the theoretical. And so Slutsky's theorem tells us that this side converges into a normal random variable divided by this constant, okay? But we have to, you know, what happens over here? So if we assume that this piece, right here, which, which is this piece, converges in probability to zero. That means as n gets really, really big and then ultimately infinity, then this goes to zero, which means, and this converges to a constant, so this goes to zero, so it's one times this is equal to this, okay? So now, um, you might think, well, how can we assume that? You know, is that a safe assumption? Well, here, the third derivative of the log likelihood um, acts like a sum again. So we're taking it divided by n. So the law of large numbers says that's going to converge to a constant. And then, in, and if our MLE is consistent, meaning it, it does converge to the true parameter, this does go to zero. So it's a, you know, it's a likely assumption you know, that it, that it holds. Now, so for large n, large, large, large n, this is approximately zero, which we're just left with this piece and that piece. So this, this is true. But this, the right-hand side, by ap applying Slutsky's theorem to the right-hand side, we know that this goes converges in distribution to a normal random variable. This converges in probability to uh, this value here. So this division converges in distribution to this. And then since this is a constant, you know, one over this, you can bring it in, but you have to square it. So one of those cancels with one of those, leaving just one. And so this right-hand side converges in distribution to a normal random variable with, with uh, this, these quantities, the inverse Fisher information. So that means that this piece, which is this piece, converges in distribution to this. They, they're the, these are the same, okay? So now my, the, the silly notation, which says, you know, for a large enough n, you know, we can divide this over, bring it in, we have to square it. So that's how we get the Fisher information for a sample size of n you know, inverse, because it's in the denominator. And then we add that over. So the MLE is approximately normally distributed. So well, anyway, I'm running out of time, and, and uh, uh, that's what I have for today. It's kind of a neat little proof or theorem that we went through. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I did. Like it if you did, and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.